All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I know it's been a couple of weeks since we've jumped on here, so we're really excited to get back into the Wednesday training sessions with Richie Sales. Um, I am Jessica Mason. This is my co-host, Kelly Taylor, and we also have a special, um, a special host that's joining us, um, Brooke Dominey from Fine Art. So you will also see her here, and we are very excited Yay! to have her. Welcome, Brooke. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Um, Full house. <laughs> yes. So a little bit of um, some housekeeping things um, for those of your coworkers who are unable to join us today. Remember this is um, being recorded. It will be posted onto our YouTube live um, website. So please be sure to check that out. Additionally, um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, we have our lovely Steve Ritchie who is monitoring our chat. So please feel free to fire those questions away and uh, he will do his best to answer you during the presentation. Alrighty. Well, without further delay, we'd like to get you out of here um, by about 2.45, 3 o'clock. So um, we're going we're gonna to get started. So, um, of course, this is uh, Richie Sales Agency. We are a primarily a lighting representative agency that covers the New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut markets. Um, we do also have some accessory lines, Howard Elliott, um, and Level 57 is an art line as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, if you're looking for any catalogs or anything, please make sure that you reach out to your Richie Sales rep. So here is our lovely team. You have, of course, Kelly and my face today and Brooke. Um, but don't forget, we have Steve Ritchie, our president. We have Ryan Higgins and Jeffrey Eisauer, who are head of showroom sales. Rob Antonekia, who is showroom and builder sales. Myself and Kelly, who are design representatives. And then without, you know, uh, we have some amazing ladies behind the scenes that maybe you talk to on a regular basis, but have never actually seen a face. So we have Mary Azalina, Terry Davis, Terry Marcellari, and Jane who are in our office. You can call them if your you know, outside sales rep is on the road, please be sure to reach out to them. And then I'd like to just give a shout out to our support team. Um, we have Tom and Joe who are amazing um, in the field and hanging fixtures, dealing with defectives, things like that. So um, just wanted to make sure that we cover everybody and give everybody a little bit of credit. So, like I said today, we have our guest speaker, Brooke Dominey, who is here. She is the Director of Brand Management and Contract Sales at Fine Art Lamps. She can speak um, incredibly about the brand, so we thought that um, it, we, nobody was better to speak about it but her, um, so you'll be hearing from her today. <laughs> Um, so today we're going to talk specifically about fine art handcrafted lighting, um, and we're really going to touch upon, fine art handcrafted lighting is a luxury lighting brand, and we're going to touch upon how to sell luxury lighting. Um, and then we're also going to touch upon some of the new 2021 introductions, of course not everything, so please be sure to check out their website at the end of the presentation. All right, here's a little brand video to get us started. Mm -hmm. The fine art of creating light fixtures has deep roots in the ancient world. It began when the need to contain light sources first met the human instinct to make useful objects beautiful. One name has been making lighting so passionately designed and so carefully crafted by artists and artisans that its creations have been defined as fine art for generations. Making art glass begins in the studio, a setting dedicated to the creative process, to inspiration, to vision, to illumination, to exploring the boundaries of what may seem impossible until it is possible. Artistry in metal knows no limits to the inspired expression of the accomplished artisan. The finished surface of a work of art is its ultimate artistic refinement. New lighting technologies relentlessly extend the creative horizon. When every piece is made to order, creativity flows freely. Artistic collaboration between designer, architect, client, and maker holds the promise of lasting beauty. For those who thrive on innovation, the great adventure is to create objects that become the defining features of uniquely designed environments. Such lighting will forever be recognized as a lasting work of fine art. I 
think that video is just so moving and so powerful in really the fact that, you know, there are so many hands that touch fine art product. Um, so fine art, uh, just a little quick background. Fine art was established in 1940. Uh, we are an American made lighting manufacturer. Everything that you order is made to order. Um, it is all hand crafted, forged, um, you know, hand painted, leafed. Um, and, and I think you get from the video that we really, back in 1940, in order to start the company, we really gathered the most, the finest designers, sculptors, decorative artists, really, you know, glass blowing, uh, all of these artists to create fine art lamps. Um, you know, they are known for their handcrafted metal, their hand blown glass and their hand applied finishes. We are very proud to be manufactured in um, the United States of America, especially today. Everything is made to order. You don't have to worry about a container, you know, sitting on the water for much longer than intended. Um, you can really, um, we have, our, we ensure design integrity, quality control, and reliable de um, delivery. So, you know, a lot of what Jessica's talking about today, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about fine art, you know, because again, I think fine art exemplifies what we're talking about when it comes to luxury and lighting. So today, what we're going to go over is kind of defining a little bit more in detail, you know, what are those key characteristics we need to be looking for? So, you know, we talk today, you know, about what is the luxury consumer today? And I think all of us having been, you know, spending a lot more time at home, I think people's tastes are really starting to strive for a more luxurious environment, a more, um, you know, elevated experience in their home. Because let's face it, people aren't traveling as much. A lot of that expendable income is being spent at the home front. So, you know, we are now seeing these uh, consumers uh, looking for these higher end products, these, uh, you know, really sought after brands and products that are going to help elevate their overall feel in their home. They're willing to pay more for that design. Um, they're willing to, you know, spend those few extra dollars to really exemplify themselves in the products that they now purchase. So, you know, we talk about, you know, not just the product, but the experience as well. You know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, from start to finish when they're purchasing that product, we're going to talk about later today, you know, when you purchase a luxury item, there's a certain expectation level and experience that you want to have from that piece, not only when you order it, but when it's installed at your home, you know, when that piece is delivered, that it's completely boxed, it's ready to go straight out the box, no assembly required. Um, you know, they're willing to pay for that extra elevation of service experience and product. And I think, you know, finding people pieces that are unique, one of a kind, almost heirloom quality, you know, is something that we're going to see an increase of now as people are really looking inward at the home front. Yeah, I was going to say, you've always had that high-end consumer, but I feel like now people are also willing more to spend more money on their interior because like Kelly said, we're home all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so as long as they understand and they are educated upon why this is a luxury product, they are their eyes are opened and they are totally willing to invest in their home. So we talk about the difference, right, between attainable and aspirational, you know, so we, we all shoulder this responsibility, right, as someone who walks into our showroom, working with clients, you know, we need to work with our showroom to establish their budget. Now, typically the attainable, obviously on budget, looking for a particular feel and style, but it's also up to us to explain to them there's a variation between what is attainable and aspirational. And of course, we're all trying to become more aspirational, right? We all aspire for those, you know, that luxurious lifestyle, you know, luxurious brands, products, you know, we, we recognize these brands instantly, Coach, Chanel, Mercedes-Benz, you know, we all want to aspire to drive those types of vehicles or own those types of products. So we know we can get similar looks from a lesser, you know, price point product, but what are you really getting? And I think it's pointing out those key factors of what you are getting when you do spend that extra, you know, dollar uh, on a piece like something like fine art that we're going to go over today. So, you know, we found this incredible quote that I wanted to share with everybody from Steve Jobs. And it says, you know, some people say, give the customers what they want, right? That's our job. We want to make the sale, get them in, get them out, done. But that's not our approach. Our job is to figure out what they're going to want before they even know what they want. People don't know what they want until you show it to them. Okay. So it's really our responsibility to show them these luxury items. Even if it's outside of their price point, I feel like it almost does us a disservice to not at least show them what they could be capable of and what they should aspire towards to get a look that's more elevated and luxurious. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you define luxury? It's a great question. We can do it very easily in the car industry. So, right, we all know the difference between 
a Kia and a Rolls Royce. There's millions of miles difference between these brands. And the reason for that is because the, the automobile industry has done such an incredible job defining what those differences are, you know, between the high-end components, the technology, hand-stitched leather. We know right away what we're looking for when we're looking at a vehicle, right? We just know it. We, it's been ingrained in us over the years from, from marketing and, and the automobile industry. But how do we now translate all of that skill set into lighting? And that's where we're going to come in uh, with Brooke, who's going to help us figure out how we do that. Yes, so there are really five key factors to look at when it comes to luxury lighting and understanding those key differences that you can recognize so quickly in the car industry or other fashion industry you know, lines. Um, when it comes to lux lighting, um, very similar to every other category in luxury, there are some uh, defining features, which is the design, the refined design of that piece, um, the precision metal working. I uh, will go into what that means in lighting. Uh, it does make a huge difference. Um, the third thing is quality glass, understanding your decorative glass features and lighting. There are a lot of differences. Um, and then number four, uh, hand finishing. Um, what that means to a product, um, to its look and feel and elevate and the elevation of the finish, um, as well as custom capabilities. Um, are, those are really the five factors that you can account for very quickly once you start to familiarize yourself with the luxury industry versus kind of the, the standard industry when it comes to lighting. So we'll go through that today. We hope you learned some things um, and that from this, uh, this meeting um, that you actually look at lighting completely different um, from this point forward. So I'm gonna call you class today because this is gonna be, this slide here is, is something just at quick glance. Um, I would challenge you to ask yourself, what makes these three fixtures different? Which one is luxury? Which one is standard? And which one's a little bit, you know, luxury plus? Like, what are the differences in these? We'll come back to this slide at the end of the presentation just to um, highlight those differences. But at quick glance, in today's industry, people tend to look at these fixtures as very much the same. Um, when the reality is that one is a Rolls Royce and one is, is not. <laughs> um, and, and understanding those um, features and differences is what we'll, we'll go through today as we kind of get through this. Um, you'll see some of this reiterated. So looking forward to the next. Um, okay, so in design, obviously um, details are what set luxury apart. Um, details are the key to everything. And when it comes to design and lighting, um, it's one of the key factors and it's often forgotten. Um, you guys will, there's, you know, from a design standpoint, um, the industry kind of looks at the details of fabric and what it's made from and how it feels, um, but it gets lost somewhere along the way in that translation, but it's so much applies to lighting. So when we look at design, we'll look at like the stiletto heels here, this collection that you see, this floral collection is inspired, um, obviously um, by fashion that has a feminine touch, but the stiletto piping um, we incorporate from the heel into the actual design of the whole collection, giving a little bit of modern entity, but also just a flair of, of femininity. Um, but it, it elevates this design. It's carried throughout the whole collection. And there's little details of fashion that incorporate into that. Um, if you look at the image of the Eiffel Tower, you're going to see how architecture, I mean, is a huge part of, of design, especially in lighting, um, when it comes to curves, shapes, and silhouettes. But if you were just to, to look at this collection, this is our beveled arcs collection. If anybody's familiar with fine art, you would know this one. The beveled arcs, um, arcs is inspired by the, all of the arcs of, of Paris. Um, if you think of the bridges, the architecture, and then specifically the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe. But if you were to flip the invert the Eiffel Tower here um, and put that side by side to that wall sconce, you're going to see quite a bit of similarities yeah. <laughs> in the design. Um, and it's, it's the details of incorporating those architectural features, which is arcs and curves, into a lighting design. It's complicated. It's complex. It's not easy to take those features and move them somewhere else, especially in, in the lighting world. One of the other things, and we use this term so much now, but um, creating organic pieces and lighting is such a challenge because uh, in nature where things are organic, 
no two things are ever the same. No flowers grow the same. You know, no two raindrops are exactly the same. That's what's so beautiful about nature. So when we're trying to create an organic feel and lighting, um, the purpose is that no two pieces are exactly the same. And in mass production, to get efficient mass production, which is not what we do, but in mass production of kind of a lesser standard brand, you're going to get the same repetition. Um, you're going to have the same detail over and over again versus creating something organic by design. Um, no two you know, lines are the same, the, the crystals are different and the details are different. And it is a challenge to do that from a design standpoint and a workmanship standpoint um, to create that organic feel. So pulling architecture, fashion, um, organic elements um, and other things into lighting are such a challenge to do it and do it well. Um, you know, you'll see there the, the, um, the water image, just kind of bringing the water through into that glass piece and what that looks like, how light comes through. It's all about light refraction. And, it's totally and then, yeah. do what? It totally, the ceiling yeah. totally looks like that water image. Like that is spot on when that glass is blown up. I mean, illuminated. Mm -hmm. it is, oh my God, it's perfect. So pulling that in and creating that organic fill is, is, it is a beautiful thing, but it, is, it, it requires a lot of detail um, work, workmanship. And the other thing, and I think these are so cool to see because until somebody actually points it out, like structurally geometric patterns and lines that are defined, you'll see um, this one collection in the right hand, upper right hand corner, um, very geometric, uh, very open. It would appear very simple, but it's not because this is inspired by Cuba. We're a Miami-based company. We have a lot of Cuba down here. Um, but you'll see the Cuban, Cuban coffee maker and the geometrical patterns that are um, embody that Cuban coffee maker are reiterated throughout this whole collection. Um, not just there, but architecture of Cuba and some other things. But what that means to artistic lighting is that there's different geometric patterns, different forms, and not the same geometric patterns repeated over and over again. And then you'll see just, again, something great to see. The, the bottom um, picture is um, this whole collection is inspired by music, and you can see the direct reflection of the curves, um, shaping of a harp, um, those lines reiterated into the actual silhouette of the body, um, and creating those, giving this a really unique design inspiration. And honestly, if you look at the shape of that fixture and pay attention to it, it's not a run of the mill silhouette. It's not something that you see often because it is inspired by musical instruments. So the design is huge in what we do. And that leads into everything else that we'll show you today um, that will really start to, to elevate um, the differences between kind of standard lighting and really your premium luxury lines. Um, again, that refined design is, is uh, defined by the details and craftsmanship of designing a fixture and an inspiration of style from the top of the fixture to the bottom. That means the body and bottom finial all the way up to the canopy. And guys, with fine art, this is so key because unless you point these features out, you, you know, they often just get overlooked. You're like, it's a beautiful fixture. It, it, mm -hmm. it carries a high price point, but you're paying attention to maybe just the crystal, the size of the fixture. But these details, custom chain, it's a big part of fine art handcrafted lighting. Our chains are designed and we make those chains here. We're not ordering those off the shelf. When you see custom chain, they're designed to inspire that, that, that collection, the whole design aesthetic. Um, but important to point out because somebody is welding those little details together to make a custom chain. A lot of work goes into a chain. Um, the highly designed canopies and back plates, you can see in the imagery here, so important. Today you can buy and, and you guys exactly. know it and you'll pay attention to it now in standard lighting. Your canopy and backplate is a circle, square, and rectangle. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> when it comes to fine art, those are purchased off the shelf. They're mass produced. I can put them on anything. Um, but when it comes to fine art, we're using that as a basis of completing design. So our backplates, our canopies are going to match that collection detail. And, you know, somebody's going to look at that fixture from the bottom up. Somebody's going to be close to it. And those details are what are setting your whole design aesthetic from standard to luxury. So little things um, that are actually big ones again, uh, but you just kind of overlook them. Um, shades. We make our shades here. It's rare that you see shades made in the US. Pictures. I mean, this is 
I mean, if you can't, I don't know. But yeah, in these two pictures, you can see a standard shade on the left. And like I was, the, the one on the right is that beveled arcs collection, the, the Parisian arcs. You can see in that shade, that arc is carried through. It's, it, is, it embodies everything of that design inspiration. But that detail is definitely elevating the price point mm -hmm. <laughs> and definitely elevating the design aesthetic. So, um, and then one of the big things here, and I, I love showing you guys this slide and it should look familiar class to that first slide we showed you. Mm -hmm. um, learning point uh, here is always noting um, the placement of your lighting, your actual light source. Um, the center socket um, is going to be the easiest way for us manufacturers to light a product that can just run the wiring straight down, put the lamp source in the middle, and fairly easy. That's the easy way of doing it. When you see the bottom image there in comparison, the light source is in the perimeter of the fixture, right? Your sockets, mm -hmm. your housing, um, there's no center, center hub dropping down, and you've got this beautiful open center. Uh, if you see that here in these cages, if you see it in drums, you know, drums often have a diffuser on the bottom because we're covering that center housing, that light socket, which is usually not that interesting to look at. Um, but when you have an open drum, a donut drum, that open center, again, the lighting is on the perimeter. Those, that perimeter lighting aspect is always, always going to elevate design, budget, and price point. Well, you think this about it, that cool. wire is, like, I didn't even think about it. In this mm -hmm. San Lantern, the wiring is literally threaded through from socket to socket through that pipe. I mean. Exactly. And I promise you, it's much more difficult than dropping in the center <laughs> hub down there. <laughs> so that, all of those design elements really lead into what we talk about is recognize, you know, recognizing precision metalworking. So there's a couple of different, you know, when we talk about metalworking, there's uh, roll forming, there's welding, uh, there's forging. We don't do forging, but other makers, and there's only a few of us that are luxury makers in the U.S., um, they do. And so anywhere you see forging, it's going to apply to this. But um, precision metalworking requires artistic welders, artistic rough, tough, dirty men on the floor. <laughs> They're not just structural. I can't take somebody from a machine shop. These guys are building very heavy fixtures, but with finite well detail, because now they're creating those organic forms, all those little details that are making it so unique to the design. And that is a difficult thing to do. So anywhere you see just some of these things we pointed out, the organic forms, those unique geometric patterns and forms. And what we say with unique geometric patterns is so important to what we do. If you look at fine art, very rarely will you see circle squares, your basic kind of forms. You're going to see a lot of ovals. You're going to see just unique um, geometric shapes uh, that are setting us apart from the sea of sameness and lighting. Um, and that is that little detail. It is harder in manufacturing to make an oval. It's more difficult. You'll see almost everything in our fine art collection has ovals and not circles because we are an elevated brand. It's almost like every standard, you know, we'll use Rolls-Royce, none of them are gonna have fabric interior. You just right. wouldn't do it. Um, and that's kind of the same thing with ovals versus circles. <laughs> um, as silly as it sounds, it just is an elevated aspect in the lighting industry. Um, but when it comes to metalworking, look at these points here, um, irregular shapes. Um, what that means, and Kelly, you showed an image in the beginning slides and you guys, and we don't have to go back to it, but um, in standard lighting, you're gonna take curves and forms, like one kind of curve, you just think of a, a little C, and I'm going to make a big C, and a smaller C, and a smaller C, and I'll create like a Christmas tree. I can make a beautiful chandelier with that, but I'm using the same shape or form over and over again. When you see different curves and movements throughout a fixture, you, you should recognize immediately that that is an elevated design. If it's a curve going this way, and a curve you know, going this way, and all these like all that curly Q stuff, it is more expensive to make. So one aspect of it. The other is um, in the image below, and we'll get into this a little bit more. From a metalworking standpoint, when we make curves, we just have to bend metal. So we're just bending, we're not welding necessarily, a bit easier. But when you get into adding Cs, and you can see in this image on the bottom, there's a C curve in the metal, and then there's a straight line. Anywhere I have straight forms and curved forms, I have gone way up in the upper echelon of 
um, metalworking, detailing, and what it was required to make that come to life because I'm having to bend metal, cut metal, and then weld these points together. So everywhere that you see in this fixture, um, in that center image on the bottom, everywhere that you see kind of a new line, like if you're writing letters, every time you change your direction, that's a weld point. Crazy. That all wow. has to be welded together. So when you see those combinations of straight lines and curves, 100%, your price point has just moved up a tier mm -hmm. um, and, and your design aesthetic has as well. I um, hope and the last, that all the showroom people on the call are looking at this and they're going to be in their showroom going, look at this yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, you go through the showroom now, you're gonna, you'll, you'll notice that detail. Yeah, you're going to notice this. I, I didn't look at this. I didn't, I mean, I understood it, but I didn't stop to, to understand it the way you're saying. Mm -hmm. And it makes so much sense. I yeah. mean. I think, and it takes a, a, like a little bit of this training, like to train your eye to look yeah. for those things or you would never really notice it. And when you point it out, I am a really good salesperson, Elaine, because when I point this out to a customer, we have, you know, here in our purse, our own showroom, it's like all of a sudden that other fixture is just terrible now. Correct. And otherwise I would have never known. Like, um, so, you know, anyway, it's like you put on a, the two carat diamond first and then the one. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, that's a girl, girl thing. Um, <laughs> Back to the, the metalworking. The other thing that we want to point out, um, it's a small detail. It's really important to recognize um, when it comes to metalworking and, and lighting, especially standard versus luxury, um, is the where uh, metal is joined, okay? So here we, we have this little diagram showing you that perfect point, that angled point. That's metal cut on a bias. You can see the metal is beveled um, and you can see kind of the detail of form, but then you've got this really clean point. That metal has been cut at an angle. Two pieces are cut at an angle and joined perfectly together, welded perfectly together to create this point versus kind of a standard. And I showed you, and this is within our line. You can, of course, like we, we do multiple things, but the picture underneath it is just a simple weld where I cut metal straight and straight. And I just weld them together to create a square edge versus like that detailed point, okay? There's a bias cut versus like a standard clean cut. Mm -hmm. um, and then even going lesser down in like a kind of standard line, many times these aren't even welded. These joints are screwed together. Um, and so those details of weld working points where things come together, how clean and seamless it is and just that detail is really important. So metalworking is really something to familiarize yourself with and I'm really point this out because a lot of times people have this assumption that they're paying for the crystal, only the crystal, the shiny bling part, the crystal, the glass, you know, how big it is. Right. And the metal working is such a huge mm -hmm. part of the budget. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The so, costing, so the costing of the, of the labor involved is a majority of what I think people don't yeah. understand. And the detail of design. Um, so the next thing we'll go into, and this really accentuates your metal working is understanding glass. Um, glass is, especially with the innovation of LED and the way it's continued to progress, it gives us a, a major platform to light glass in so many beautiful, incredible ways. And that's why the lighting industry is continuing to change and brands are elevating. Um, but understanding glass, um, when it comes to fine art, everything that we do is made in our state of the art um, glass facility here in Miami. You see it here on the video. Everything is made to order. We don't source glass from anywhere. So you look through a catalog, every piece of glass that you see in there, whether it's obvious um, glass pendants versus um, bowls to flush mounts, we, we design all of that glass. We make it here. Here in the video, you see Frank. Frank Eaglesby is um, an understudy of Chihuly. He is a European studied uh, glass blower. He's an extreme talent, well-respected in the industry. And he heads our glass department. 12 glass artisans, all they do is make glass and when you order it, that piece is custom made for your order. A couple of things in glass to recognize. You can see here in the images that we've shown you, hand-blown glass, the defining feature of hand-blown glass is that no two pieces will ever be the same. There is no glass maker, not even a Murano and the most highly awarded glass maker that can make by hand blown glass, two pieces exactly alike. It's nearly impossible going back to that organic form that we always kind of appreciate. So anywhere that you see those inherent kind of details that the glass is not perfect, 
Um, that is a luxury item when it comes to glass making, where you see air bubbles and pockets and kind of glass imperfections to a certain extent. No, okay. But those imperfections are what are making it luxury. Um, that is hand blown because in the industry, everybody listen, glass, <laughs> glass has a term called blown glass. Now, it's a very gray area in our world because we hand blow all of our glass like you see in this picture here. Someone's actually making it, but there under the term blown glass is hand blown glass and machine blown glass. Machine blown glass is gonna be glass. If you see a collection and those pieces are exactly the same as blown glass, but they're perfectly matching. That is machine blown glass. It does not require an artist. So for us, we're very partial to making sure you are clear on this because they are not the same thing. And we often are compared to machine blown glass and it's not the same thing. Well, and we don't so. want to be that. I mean, you know, and people have to understand the beauty of a unique piece of glass. Every single one is made to order, you know, made for you by hand. It's it's an elevated luxury good. Yeah, and it, it really is important to let your customer know yeah. that because it's a, it's a neat thing to know that somebody made this for you when you ordered it. Absolutely. Um, and we have 12 artisans, but one of them is a girl and she's awesome. So I always have to give her credit <laughs> on those things. Um, girl power out there. Anyway, so when we get into glass, that's the very, you know, the, the defining factor of uh, blown glass, hand blown versus machine. And then you have to understand crystal. So all crystal is glass. And I wanna make sure you guys are just using your terms, right? Cause I hear it so many times, like well, people will refer to crystal as glass or, or Glass is crystal. While all crystal is glass, all glass is not crystal. A couple of things to understand. Um, in today's industry, um, crystal is actually optic glass, okay? Um, about 12 years ago, really 1992 is when it started, but we got really strict in the U.S. on lead regulations. And anybody should be familiar, um, you know, lead paint became a huge issue. Um, lead in toys from China, imports, um, lead in drinking glasses, the FDA has regulations on it. So in the US, when it comes to lighting, when we say crystal, that is actually a lead-free optic glass because it is the industry strand standard today that we're not actually using true crystal. True crystal has 24 to 30% lead content, and that is regulated and not allowed in the U.S. unless your grandmother already had that chandelier. <laughs> um, so, you know, there are people do get around it because they still do make lead crystal in Europe, but because it has become so regulated in the U.S., um, very popular brands that you would know, Swarovski, um, any of, of, of the high-end crystal brands, they have lead crystal, but for U.S. production, manufacturing, importing, um, they have a lead-free optic glass that's under that brand name. So anyway, I just want you guys to understand because crystal has been a gray area. It's kind of a, an evolving change in the industry. The main thing to understand about crystal and elevated crystal is pretty much today when it comes to the actual crystal, we're all using optic glass, okay? So that's pretty consistent in quality. It may be cut better than other, you know, manufacturers, but um, what you want to look for is custom crystal because we're talking about glass and purchasing glass off the shelf, um, you know, machine blown glass. When it comes to crystal, um, fine art doesn't purchase any glass off the shelf, which what that means and what an elevated luxury um, brand will be, should be doing always is um, designing their own crystal. So with fine art, our crystal is inherent to the collection. So when something is introduced, that means that that crystal does not exist. No other brand um, of crystal has that same design because we, our design team has literally sketched out the crystal, sketched out the cuts, the bevels, how we want it to look, the sizing, how the light is gonna reflect. It's all part of designing crystal. At fine art, we design all of our crystals. So when we bring a collection to market, what is so intriguing to you guys and you may not know it or why customers, something will grab a customer's attention, mm -hmm. that crystal doesn't exist anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It's a new crystal. Um, and, and that speaks volumes, especially to a luxury market. If nobody else has it, then I automatically mm -hmm. want it. Um, but it is inherent to what we do. And you can see in these um, examples, 
We do have very unique crystals. Um, we patent, many of them are copied and that is a compliment. But when we introduced a collection, that crystal did not exist. Um, and you can see just throughout um, the examples here, what you know some of those examples of crystal are. And we'll show you some more as we go through. But understand, so when it comes to your decorative blingy parts, you have hand blown glass and machine blown glass, standard off the shelf crystal. And y'all all know what it is. It's a pear shaped drop, a beaded mm -hmm. you know, crystal. Yeah. Um, so standard off the shelf crystal versus custom crystal. And nothing is actually crystal, really it's off the glass. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're all educated now. And then here, I just wanted to give you guys, again, just kind of a learning thing, learning curve on speaking to glass and crystal. The best way to know the difference um, is glass is always going to have softer edges. If it's glass, you're using the term glass, it'll be softer edges. Um, it won't be completely transparent, um, whereas crystal is going to be highly beveled, point, pointed edges, really refined and a strong clarity and you should see the rainbow effect when light hits it. That's the light refraction and reflection. You don't get that same thing from glass because crystal has a different component in that that's creating that light refraction. So anyway, just to kind of a reference, what is glass versus crystal? The first image on the left gives you a really good idea of that. It's just a great example. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's fine. The top and bottom, you can see those, the, the diffusers on the actual bulb, soft, kind of diffused, that is glass. That's blown glass versus the below, those strong cut bevels. Um, you're getting a lot of light movement, even in the image, that's crystal. So there's your defining features. And then we wanna talk about hand finishing. So here on this slide, we have three things, um, not to confuse you, because we have plating on here. Pla plating, hand painting, and gilding. Plating, we're just bringing up because it is um, a big finish in the industry. We all use it every day, except at Fine Art Lamps, Fine Art Handcrafted Lighting. You will not get a plated finish because plating is done. It's a dipped process. It's a machine process. It's a mass production process. Um, it's not a hand applied finish. Everything that we do at Fine Art is a hand applied finish that requires an artist, an artisan to do it. It is inherent to who we are. That's why our name is Fun Art. <laughs> this is the art part of it. You see the lighting part, you see the hand craftsmanship and the metalworking. But the fun art of it is that we have, I wanna say about 50 um, true artists on the floor that are painting every piece that's made to order by hand. Our finishes are done by collection. Crazy, but now that if I tell you this, you're gonna think about it. So I'm talking about all those shapes and curves and silhouettes that we make those organic forms um, that are all unique and inherent and different. The painting process is so that we can go in per collection based off of the design inspiration and contour all of those lines. We wanna accentuate the detail of what we've just spent so much time creating and making. So the artists are going in, they're painting in where the antiquing needs to go. Think of an oil rub bronze. There is plenty of oil rub bronzes out there that are a spray finish. At Fine Art, oil rub bronze is truly, we have a bronze paint that's painted on, and then you have an artisan who is with her cloth out there actually rubbing, and I see it, in the oil and giving that contour so that it is a true oil rub bronze finish. One thing that elevates co collections you don't really recognize firsthand is that detail of finish. It's all in the details. So hand painting and then hand gilding. Gilding is leafing. You can see in this video that's playing here. This is our standard finish, guys. Okay, when we talk about elevated luxury, this is a gold, we have a gold leaf and a silver leaf. You can put this on anything in our collection. Um, these pieces, when they come out of fabrication from the metal shop, they get sprayed with like a two hour adhesive. It's a sticky, like a glue. And then these ladies are um, taking the gold leaf paper leafing it on, using their paintbrush to give it texture, creating this high lux finish. Um, and again, an elevation of finish. The difference between this and a spray on paint or a plating is night and day. So just really don't forget to talk about the finishes to the customers <laughs> interested in fine art because somebody well, painted that thing for them. <laughs> it's even interesting, Brooke, that you say that gilding is our standard. That's yes. no, that is mm -hmm. anybody else's high end, you know what I yes. mean? That's our, that's our standard. And then we go in and we have, you know, artisans that will hand, 
you know, add to on, on other pieces. So, it's and just- if you guys think about it, I mean, the reason it's our standard is because honestly to gild to leaf, um, is a much easier process than actually hand painting right. and contouring mm-hmm. every line and detail of, you know, we're, we have our standard fixtures. We've got six foot standard fixtures in some cases, the big things, you know, to paint. Yeah. Um, so that's why, but yeah, it's an amazing finish and it does really change the aesthetic of, of, of a collection which segues perfectly into the next slide. <laughs> yes. So um, here we're just kind of showing you those, we're reiterating the standard finish options that we have. Um, one of the things we're leading into customization here, but um, in today's age in the luxury market, people what would they want what they want and yeah. they want it the way yeah, absolutely. they want it. <laughs> you guys know as well as I do. <laughs> Um, and this is a benefit to the way that we man- manufacture. Making each piece to order allows us the flexibility to change the finishes. So here we have these standard finishes, the matte black, the bronze, the gold leaf, the silver leaf, and then a champagne gold leaf, um, just because those are the most popular. Um, but what this allows anybody to do within the fine art collection is imagine anything in our collection. You look through a catalog, you, you guys, we've been making lighting for 80 years. So we do have Mediterranean traditional, we, we, we run the gamut of styles, um, but allowing this, having this finish option allows you to really change mm-hmm. a fixture. And it is a custom, but it's such a simple custom for us. We're making the piece anyway, so we're just right. going to paint it a different color. And here in this images, we've given you an example. If you look at the top two pieces, um, you'll see on the left um, that uh, pendant there with the shades. That is the traditional version. It's um, a kind of a weathered um, bronze with a linen shade and the bone candle covers. Very traditional, mm-hmm. um, open and airy, but one, two changes. Um, to the right of that is just taking that exact same fixture, gold leafing it, and then changing the shade to just a bright white shade. Same fixture, minimal custom, no price change. You have two different aesthetics and you can do that throughout the whole collection. So customization mm-hmm. is huge to reach your luxury market because you can give them what they want when mm-hmm. they use the fine art. Well, yeah. and with, with the luxury market, you can browse through fine arts catalog, fine arts website as like an inspiration, like a starting point. Yeah, you it should always it. be an inspiration because what is happening too much and like we're doing these to educate you guys is we have collections, yes, that we've had for 15 years because they're timeless. I call some of them one of them, the bubbled arcs, the Coco Chanel lighting. She will not go out of style ever. It's the most beautiful <laughs> collection in the industry, but you've seen it, right? And it has, it, it was introduced mm-hmm. with this antique finish. Doing that, that kind of traditional classic piece in a matte black, oh like the God. pop, the contrast yeah. to creating this really cool contemporary mm-hmm. crystal piece changes everything. Yeah. So it's Absolutely. fun. It's fun to see it. Absolutely. And then that just kind of goes into customization. Again, people want what they want. We are made to order. This is giving you, we're just showing you some examples of taking our running line. So you can work within the catalog and build off of that. You're not limited, mm-hmm. again, to the finish, you know, the, mm-hmm. the shade. Um, but here is, is how you can work with existing uh, collections and build things from them. We have on the left, um, this is, I think this is Hanging Man Foot. This has just got installed this week in LA. Um, but this is a five tier um, foray from our foray collection. Each one of these rings is actually an individual piece um, to the collection. The designer just wanted to incorporate, like make a custom piece using the standard mm-hmm. pieces. It's great for budget as well. Because yep. <laughs> um, you're taking something standard, yep. know, we're combining it, but it's minimal customization. Um, if you look at the bottom piece of that, so really cool because they took the flush mount of this collection and just made that the drop center piece and it was gorgeous. Um, next to that is custom glass. Um, if you look at the this wall sconce, I think it's about three foot tall. Um, the standard to that is re- basically the top piece. Um, that's what you would see in the catalog today. And this is just taking that inspiration, loving the glass, mm-hmm. loving the design and elevating it for the space. It's in a huge, beautiful home and a stairwell. It was stunning. Um, and then on the right, these are drops. If you were to look in the catalog today, this is um, part of our Singapore collection. That drop, it has this beautiful custom chain that you can kind of see that squared chain. I mean, if you look at the catalog, it's a nice piece, right? right? right. But what, what the designer here, what she did was just take mm-hmm. multiples of that single drop and make this 
it was a dramatic chandelier mm-hmm. and, and it was just creating a custom canopy. That's well, all we did. Insane. This is actually a perfect example. I'm just realizing this now of we're talking about all these components that make a luxury fixture. The chain is a huge component for, of the picture. And now the for way this, that design. This, this is designed, you really get to appreciate mm-hmm. it. It's not up there, you know, 10 feet up in the sky where nobody's right. looking at like, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a beautiful it's in, and it's in your like you said it's in your face in the stable yeah. but i think too when you think about you know a luxury consumer you know look at these homes you know look at where they're going like they have an expectation level that you're going to be able to produce what they want how they want it and look at this application clearly you know this p- piece was designed to mimic the curvature and allow the clearance for that stairwell specifically for that client for this application and that's the type of level of ex- service and experience that this customer expects from from a luxury purchase yeah and i think one of the things that we didn't touch on but they also want it when they want it so oh yeah um, <laughs> Our standard product, just so you guys know, in this whole process of making, it's four to six week lead time on standard. And then for custom, it's anywhere from 12 to 16 on average. Um, And, you know, that does say a lot as well. Um, All of our design is in-house. We have um, engineers, um, structural support here um, to help assist. So we're not just making beautiful lighting. We're not bringing in pieces, putting them together. Like we are a true resource when you're building a custom because custom can be scary because you don't have all the information. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're creating it as you go. Um, and the team is all in-house here to help you through that process. Absolutely. And then just some more fun installations. This is showing you complete customs. This is literally, these, this image on the left-hand corner is off of a napkin sketch. The designer <laughs> literally drew this on a napkin, gave it to us. And TL doesn't show you this, but this is a six foot, um, six foot tall installation of custom glass. Um, and then you can obviously see pink flamingos. Um, that is a senior living facility, perfectly suited here in South mm-hmm. Florida. Uh, but just a really unique approach. This is not even a lighting fixture, guys. This is actually just an art installation of custom glass that our glass team made and developed for a designer. This actually started out, I'll just share with you, as a $100,000 um, quote because they wanted flamingos. Um, we can work backwards into budget and ended up, you know, somewhere around like 20 something thousand, but it, it's because we, you come to us with something, we're going to do it full force because that's how design, this design team thinks. And then we can scale it back. These aren't actual flamingos. These are just wings, <laughs> but you get the point. Mm-hmm. I love it. So back to the session class. Um, quiz. Now, can you illuminate the variables of luxury lighting? And that's the question. We hope that we are able to answer some of those for you, what those variables are. Um, if you look at the three fixtures that we pointed out in the beginning, you'll see now the one on the left is your standard piece. These all will fill a space, right? They'll fill a space very similarly. They're the same, similar size, kind of the same look and feel. They're cages. Um, but on the left, that is just straight lines. Those are straight lines that are joined together and to create a form. Um, there's no interest of geometric form and shape. And um, you can see here where we're talking about the corners, how they join. Um, if you look closely in that image, you can actually see where that bottom um, metal is. It's either screwed into the top metal. I don't even think it's welded because you can see the seam. Oh, you can see the seam, yeah. You see the seam in the image. Oh, and here you go. Just... Here's a flat box. It's up to you to build it. <laughs> yes. So um, that's just pointing great. out kind of the standard detail. And of course, that center hub, that drop um, of, of the lamp source in the middle. Um, and there's really no other decorative features to that piece. I mean, it's just it's just a cage, right? Well, you have then if you look at the next picture in the, in the middle, you're going to see where this starts to get elevated and we go from standard to luxury because you have straight lines, you have curves, you have that point, the cut on the bias, you never see where the metal is joined. There's no seams anywhere. Um, There's some interest. You can see how the forms are overlapping. Um, Decorative finial, decorative oval, like kind of clasp at the top. You still have the center hub lighting there. One of the things to point out here is while you have that center hub, you don't see that drop rod. The one next to it, you see, I just see the rod coming down. Um, they've layered the lighting so that you kind of have some things covered. You still have that center form. But then if you look to the one on the right, this is your fully elevated design. This is always gonna run a much higher budget because you have lighting on the perimeter. You have all of these unique shapes. You've got metal coming together. They're overlapping. That metal is overlapping to create that football in the center, that kind of shape. 
Um, and then, of course, lighting on the perimeter, the decorative um, features of just the clasp at the top. And so these all look similar at first glance, but they're very, very different from design and, and price point and, and the detail that's required to make them. More things, class. <laughs> um, you'll see on the left, all of it come together, designing from top to bottom, the decorative canopy, the custom chain, the irregular pattern, so straight lines and curves, creating that really unique shape, like that fixture you've never seen anywhere else ever because it's yeah. so unique, all of those lines and movements. Mm -hmm. And then of course the custom drop crystals that are encased, those crystals very rarely do you even see encased crystals. That is a whole nother process in crystal, like yeah. jewelry making. Mm -hmm. um, so that is luxury, like at the oomph degree. I mean, you've got, it's like so elevated, you've got crystal at the canopy, yeah. um, that chain detail. Uh, and then if you look on the right, again, this is a very kind of transitional light piece, but again, those elements of, of, of luxury are there. The curve on the bottom with that straight line, that little point, the cut on the bias, um, and then the shade detailing, that's not a standard shade. You can see um, the design features carried throughout as well as that big oval in the center. Um, so just constant features of, of luxury. And we wanted to share with you too that image of look at how these bad boys arrive. I mean, this is like out the box, like no assembly required, completely manufactured from top to bottom. Everything is done. And look how carefully and skillfully they pack this. I mean, obviously all that work goes into it, but that's the sign of a true luxury item as well as is just how it arrives to your client's door. So right. you talked about experience in the beginning, Kelly, like they yeah. expect that they're going to get this beautifully boxed, um, you know, carefully packaged fixture at the end of the day and there's nothing worse than ordering like a gorgeous piece of furniture and being like oh my god what do you mean I have to like put it all together are you serious <laughs> yeah. no well and it's also critical um to the goal is always to try to eliminate as many touch points because it is a piece of art we view yeah. it that way so it's it's yeah, custom you don't want to leave room for and, error <laughs> it's custom packed and created to you know the best way that we can get it to the consumer um so that very few hands touch it after the whole company has <laughs> touched it here. Um, you know, just to ensure it's, it's, we try to protect that like you would if you ordered you know, some luxury painting. It's well, the same it's, concept. It's funny that you said that too, Brooke, because let's just say, I mean, listen, shipping things, things happen in shipment, uh, in shipping. Let's say that one of these shades came damaged. We don't have shades on the shelf to just ship you out in two days, mm -hmm. a replacement shade that's just not who we are because we made it for you to begin with. And that our extra chain link, uh, extra chain link. like we make the chain at the beginning, we need to make the chain. We need to, you know, finish it in the right finish. Um, and so just making sure that the customer understands that. I think sometimes they really do think we just have stuff sitting on a shelf and, you know, sad note because we are made in America and we're talking about all the things that we make. Everything is under a lifetime, a manufacturer lifetime warranty as well. We warranty everything. We do all those detailed welds, um, that finish, that hand applied finish. Um, all of that is under a lifetime warranty. What that means to the consumer, which is great. If something happens to that finish, we're going to replace it under the manufacturer mm -hmm. warranty. If a, something happens to a weld, I mean, that fixture is going to have to be replaced. And so we really stand behind the product as, as a U.S. manufacturer and maker. Well, awesome. Very informative. I learned something. I'm sure Good. I did. I hope so. Somebody has notes. <laughs> um, now we're gonna we're gonna briefly talk because we always like to talk about new products. We're gonna talk about some of the new 2021 introductions. Not a whole lot. Remember, they're all on the website. If you need new cataloging, um, there is a brand new beautiful catalog. If you don't have that, please reach mm -hmm. out to your reps. Um, but without further ado, um, this is Elevate. And I think, Kelly, you said it this morning on the 10 o'clock, which I thought was great. Elevate is really a, a platform of which there is other pieces of glass that you can incorporate, different configurations. And I think that that was really, um, it, it just made a lot of sense. So here's a quick video that's going to explain the different types of glass, um, the different configurations that you can have with Elevate. And how it's made. Glass. 
class. Maybe the right. More of that. Each feather is quite a process. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. That's one feather. Like, it's beautiful. You can see the dichroa coming through. White plume, obviously, there's much more white. You don't have these colors coming through the feathers now. Yeah. Yeah. When we watched this earlier this morning, I was blown away by the wet saw and like seeing how yeah. many etches. I mean, now when you look at this piece, you see how many etches go into it. But like we talked about, you know, the elevate is a platform. You know, you can see you've got your different variations. You can put the dichroic plume, white plume, crystal stardust, ebony stardust, the meteorite, or the pages, which is also very popular. So you, you, we're not going to go through this in depth, but you can select your model, your finish, your glass option there, and then your canopy configuration. That's where you really come in with are you going to do this linear canopy? Are going to do a circular canopy. And I will tell you from experience, Jess and I have been quoting relentlessly over the past few weeks because it's so popular, all kinds of different variations. So when we talk about custom capabilities, we've been quoting these as long as 40 foot drops. I mean, just crazy, all kinds of combinations. So there really is no limit to this platform. And I think it's a stunner. So definitely, you know, when somebody is looking for something very inherent and luxury level and special, this is a great, you know, ex you know example of what luxury lighting really can be. You know, yeah, I, and I think- Oh, sorry. One of the points that just, we, it seems to get forgotten. You, we'll, you look at this platform, but we make the canopies, everyone. So you're not limited to those canopies either. These are just mm -hmm. the standard ones, but sometimes it's just forgotten. There's still this assumption that we just order the canopy and everything else. Yeah. Right? So we make the canopies so we can configure those to the yeah. space as needed. All right, so now this is uh, the Asu collection. The Asu collection is beautiful. This is actually mm -hmm. crystal, right, Brooke? This is crystal. Yes. Well, yeah, optic, this is all... uh, optic glass. Right? Optic glass. Nailed, <laughs> you can say crystal, but just understand it's not lead crystal. Um, optic glass. There's beautiful, you'll see in the video, there's a there's a, a beautiful metal working and that's on the outside of the petal that I really think just, again, elevates the, the whole design aspect. It could have just been crystal, but we you know go in there and add metal work and that, that mimics the shape of the crystal. Mm -hmm. But back, also, to, back to Brooke's point too, like you talked about, forms. exactly, like this, why does everybody love this? Like we've all seen flowers, whatever. Have you ever seen such a beautiful crystal, crystal flower? Like it's a new designed crystal. It's, it's amazing. It's not off of a shelf. We <laughs> No, it is not. And there's a reason why I don't see it because it's difficult. <laughs> we learned that it's difficult. <laughs> Two tone, the contour, the petals versus the fixture. The lettos, yep. the top there. They just do a great job, you know, mm -hmm. showing up close all of the detail work. Now that we talked about it, you can really understand and appreciate it. And that it looks like a true flower. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Um, so then we have Vesta, which again is another um, um, platform, which you can do, you know, different heights, a different quantity of, of glass. But you really, I mean, now looking at this, you know that this is hand blown. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you were sweeping through Brooke's presentation, and then I will have to do it again. You can um, see in the image that no two pieces are the same. Like the shapes are all odd and this is straight out of our catalog, you know, straight out of our imagery. So mm -hmm. yeah, and the layering, remember when he was, you know, placing hot bars, Yeah, that was you know, sweet. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's not just again, it's not just off of a shelf. This was created, mm -hmm. this was designed. I'm sure that there was, you know, tens of other designs that could have been the best of look, but they didn't pass until we got it perfect. Um right. so you have a 
You have an amber vesta that's really mimicked um, to be on like the warm side, kind of like mimicking um, the sunrise, the beautiful warm sunrise. Then we have a um, frosted and a clear glass that's more on the cool tones, more like to mimic the moon. So again, all those uh, natural mm -hmm. um, elements. And this is large glass. These are yeah. about eight inches, yeah. about eight yeah. inches. They're like big. Yeah. <laughs> So this is what creates those openings yeah, that the that light passes crazy. through. Yeah, I love that swirling. Okay, hold on. Where it started, like, There's Charlene. Yeah, <laughs> get it, girl. <laughs> yeah, this is just to make one of those. Yeah, two pieces. people to make one piece of glass, and look at how many are on though. Yeah. Look at the tool that they use to do that dimpling. That's it's so a big cork. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's sweet. Quark. Huh. We are such lighting nerds. That's just <laughs> but, um, but uh there is I, I challenge you to you know use our catalog, look at our our products mm -hmm. as a starting point. We can the answer is always yes. It, it just depends on you know how mm -hmm. big their pockets are and and understanding all of what goes into making fine art. We can change the size, we can change the finish, we can make a new shade, we can make something from scratch. The answer is always yes. So I challenge you to think outside the box. Start looking at things, you know, with a different finish or, or things like that to make it work for your customer and your project. Um, again, uh, Fine Art has a new website. If you haven't gone and checked it out, please make sure you do so. It is a lot easier to find product. Um, we have some beautiful high-res images on there now um, as well. Also, if you don't follow Fine Art on Instagram, they have a ton of install images. They, mm -hmm. you know, grab shots of the metalworking and the glass blowing right there in the facility in real time. So it really will continue to inspire you. You can send, you know, videos to your customers, things like that. So please make sure you check that out. Um, in addition, uh, our Richie sales website as well, we have, you know, some install images. If you have images of projects that you've done, we'd love to mm -hmm. share them. Um, Kelly and I are the brains behind lighting inspo, which is our Richie sales Instagram page. Please be sure to follow us. Give us a little reach out. Let us know who's behind the screen. If you, you know, tag us, we will absolutely repost you. We'd love to continue to um, market your brand as well. In addition, like I said in the beginning, we have a Richie Sales YouTube page, which believe it or not, there are other lighting nerds that are watching our videos. Not just us. <laughs> it's not just us. Um, so for those of you or your coworkers, if you would like to share this with mm -hmm. your customers, please, by all means, there's no pricing on here. Um, it is all just talking about brands, products, mm -hmm. and, and you know, elevating. Yeah. Cause we know with the, with the pandemic, it's been a very rough year to have new products brought to our salespeople, to our firm. So this is a great way for you to get a nice breadth of all of our manufacturers of what came out this year, what's going on, you know, getting in touch with what's in tune with the manufacturers and what's, you know, new. So definitely encourage you to check out those YouTubes and we'll be adding this recording on there shortly after this, uh, this meeting. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We Thanks really appreciate your time. Um, continue to stay tuned. You know, we love doing these webinars. If there's certain topics you want to hear uh, us, yeah. you know, cover, please let us know the feedback. We'd love to hear back from you guys. And Brooke, thank you for yeah, being our first so guest much. speaker. We appreciate Thanks. you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for you guys, uh, everyone who joined as well. I'm sure we will have you back again soon. <laughs> All, right, All right, everyone. Thanks, have guys. Good afternoon. Stay dry because there's something yes. coming my way. <laughs> so have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.